I bought my ISM about hmm, three years ago. Found out about the uh, Knit Smart through some of the ladies on the list and really came to love it. And just recently I sold my ISM and a Blue Bond Classic I had when I was lucky enough to find an Elite with a ribber. I don't get to knit as much as I'd like to because I do work outside the home and then I do book work at home as well. But when I do, I really enjoy it. I'm fortunate to have a bond buddy right here in my little town of Otis. She lives about one and a half blocks away and she goes by Sea Pine on the list. She's a fun lady. She's the one that got me started in all this because when I was wanting to buy my ISM, I heard she had one and I went to her house and just sat and watched her knit away and was amazed by what she could do on this machine. We're getting close to the end. Isn't this just nifty? I know this is probably just totally mesmerizing. I gotta pull down on my knitting here to find my next stitch because I want to be sure I don't lose anybody. The last thing I want is a hole in my socks. Up, down, and I believe that's it. Come in through my last stitch here on the side, pull myself up, and I'm going to tie off. I try not to tie this not too bulky because it is, if this were a real pair of socks, this would be right at the toe. I tie it once and then I would weave it back in. I'm going to leave that so I can show you when I turn it. Look between the waist yarn and you've got a real pretty join. We just need to uh, pair back our waist yarn. I like to wit knit extra rows of waist yarn because I don't like to be surprised and have it unravel on me when I'm working. And as we pull away, our toe emerges. Pretty nifty. This is one big toe. Picking up your yarn, you'd proceed back to sew up the side and you'd have a finished stocking. I think that one looks like it's ready to be stuffed with lots of knitted goodies. I'll show you real quick up here. Once you unravel your waist yarn, then this will come off and be your finished hem. Of course, unraveling, unraveling from this direction isn't the easiest, so I'm going to turn off the recorder and do it without you watching. Another thing that you can do, which Leanne suggested before on the list, is to come in here where you first start, don't panic, clip that one, come to the other end of the first row, clip that one, pull it up, come through, pull it out, ta-da! You can unravel this mess later. Now you can see that's where we rehung our hem. And it's all nice and neat. Pretty slick, huh? I hope you'll give socks a try. Give it a go on these big old boys first and you'll be surprised how much fun you have. There's alternatives, you know, of like I said, putting a duplicate stitch in here. Fair Isle. 
I think uh, the next one I try, I want to do the little lights, the little flecks of color here and there across. And I'll show you how to do a pico edge on a turned hem as well. The next hem option or ribbing option I'm going to show you has to um, deal with what's called the mock rib. Cast on as normal using your waist yarn and an open cast on using an odd number of needles. Knit one row, come back with starting with the second needle, push every other needle forward. And you're going to take and move that stitch over. I just move my stitches all to the right. I imagine you could go to the left if that's what you want to do. Just take that stitch off and move it one needle over. Go all the way across the length of your knitting. Once you get all the way across, make sure that the needles that you have removed the stitches from are all the way back in to holding position. You can see that now all my stitches are moved. All the needles that no longer have stitches are in the back total non-working position. What I'm going to do is knit the required number of rows for my ribbing it's going to be doubled because this is going to be rehung. So for my particular instance, I'll knit those rows and then we'll come back and rehang the original stitches. Okay, I've knitted my number of rows times two because it's going to be folded over. You can see it's really open. What I'm going to do is bring those needles back forward that don't have any stitches on them. so I can rehang the previous. My instructions tell me to hold everything up and put the first loop between the needles onto the first empty. So my first loop down here is going to go on this first empty. You should be able to see now, after rehanging the stitches, that they are alternating. Here's the hung stitch, here's the end of the last knitted stitch, etc. The instructions told me to start on one end, move to the other end, and come back and forth until I got to the middle. And when I got to this end, my far right end, I had to bring one more needle out into working so that everything would still be offset. So again, we have needles out, needle in, needle out, needle in. Now I'm going to return everything so that I can knit them. So what I like to do is bring everything into forward. all the way forward, get everything behind the latches. To me it just makes it that much easier. Open all the latches. We don't want to lose anything at this point. And push them back into working position to join and continue knitting.
everything's where it should be. You now have one continuous row. You're going to continue on and you'll see when I turn this what a nice hem it makes. Really quick. Now if I were using this on a garment I would probably go down at least one key plate size to tighten that up otherwise you're going to have a really loose rib. If you want a loose rib that's not going to suck in and emphasize that it is a ribbing then use the same key plate size and you'll be really pleased. Okay and here's what the mock rib looks like when it's finished. I've removed the uh, waste yarn here. And the thing is it does look a little bit open and one time it was told to me by a good knitting buddy that what you have to do is pop the rib. I put through a knitting needle or a pencil. A ruler works real good she said and you just take and give it a good pull. And that's going to bring everybody back into position where they should be. Again this is kind of an open rib. It's a little bit different than what we're used to when we latch down and rib up. But it's a nice alternative. I think if you use the uh, one key plate smaller you'll be happier. Another option is to not drop the every other needle. Go ahead and knit your number of rows like normal but when you rehang like we did on the first hem you just hang on the alternate needle. This is option number two. I'll show you on the next one how to do a pico hem. What I've prepared for now is the standard pico hem. It's so simple and very basic. What we're going to do is push out every other needle starting with the third needle in. I like to do that if you're sewing it together like in this case for the cuff on the stocking and that way I don't end up with too close of a picoette there. I'm going to use my needle pusher starting with the third needle in, push out every other needle ending with the third needle from the other end. To get this to work out you need an odd number of stitches. Once you have the stitches, or excuse me, the needles pushed out, you're going to move these over. Doesn't matter which way, but the stitches that you have pushed out into the forward position, you're just going to pick them up. It's kind of hard to do without the second hand. And put them onto the adjacent needle. Sometimes I like to just go ahead and rock up my needles that are waiting for the new stitch and open up that little latch. It just makes it so much easier for me and I 